Hello guys, in this video I want to show you how you can make your study sessions a lot more effective and enjoyable by using AI. But before we go there, I want to show you a clip of the TED talk that inspired me to make this video. And I really believe that if you reframe like the challenges, it can make all the difference. I have a simple thought experiment to sort of showcase this. Let's say I gave you a test and it had instructions on it that you would carry out. And to do that, it had sort of buttons like this. And the instructions would say something like push button three for five seconds, and then push button six for one second, then push buttons three and five for six seconds, and so on. And unless you carried out the instructions on page one exactly, you couldn't see the other 32 pages of the test. How much would I have to pay you to take that test for an hour? Now suppose I changed the word test here to game, and I rotated this. And for the input device, I shrunk the buttons and moved them here, and I gave it a cool paint job and maybe different button styles. <laughs> and then instead of using words, I represented the tasks you needed to accomplish visually like this. Note the output is the exact same. You have to push these buttons in a very specific manner to move on to the next page or level, as it were. Now picture it's 1986. How much would you pay me to take this test just for an hour? Amazing, right? So what Mark Robert just showed us is something we call gamification the art of adding game-like mechanics to non-game environments. And as you can imagine, when done right, this process is incredibly useful. That's why thousands of people have been trying for decades to figure out the best way to use gamification to make studying a lot more fun. Some teachers, for instance, have tried really hard to find the best strategies to gamify their classes. A great example of this is illustrated in this TED talk by Dr. Christopher C. Here, Dr. C shows us how a class about something like antihypertensives can be literally transformed into an escape room with all sorts of interesting challenges, puzzles, and collaboration. Other people have tried a different approach and have started to create actual study video games. A great example of this is Borb Rigme, a video game that integrates USMLE preparation resources with a real-time strategy game. In Borb Rigme, players are able to navigate multiple levels, fight with enemies, pick up treasures, improve skill trees, and even play with friends, and all of that while prepping for their boards with USMLE style questions and flashcards. So all of these applications and creative use cases are amazing, especially if I am lucky enough to be in the class of Dr. C or if I happen to be pursuing the specific goal of prepping for the steps. But what if I have a different goal? What if I want to gamify something more ordinary, like my typical study sessions and transform things like this chapter from this textbook or this review article from a journal into something a little bit more interactive and fun? Is there any way I can do this? Well, there is, and in this video I'm going to show you how it works and why you should consider using it. Okay, so the basic idea behind all of this system is to turn any study material, any sort of text, video, chapter, anything you want, into a simple and interactive gamified learning experience. How are we going to do this? Simple. First, we take the text that we need to review and we instruct a free AI chatbot called ChatGPT to turn it into review questions. Then we take those review questions and paste them into a gamified version of Anki. And then we use that gamified version of Anki to review the study material. I mean, there's some important details to keep in mind to make sure that this process is done correctly, but I explain all of that in the written instructions that I'm gonna leave down below. So, why is this a good idea? Well, number one, because it's fun. I mean, it's not like playing FIFA or anything like that, but to be honest, no gamification method really makes studying feel completely like a professional and dedicated video game. Having said that, I did feel the overall experience to be a lot more enjoyable, and a lot of the usual friction that I find myself when I try to study was basically gone when I try to use this method. So that is certainly a benefit, but beyond that, I think that this is a good idea as well because it turns a very passive study method into an active study method. So that means that this not only can be more fun, but it also can be more effective. In fact, after completing a trial of this study method, I realized that I had basically copied one of the learning techniques that Professor Cornell used in a class experiment. In that experiment, two groups of students were instructed to learn a set of information, but the first group did it directly. Right off the bat, they started reading the study material without doing any other sort of previous intervention whereas the second group started by first attempting to solve a series of challenging questions about the material. Yes, about the material they haven't yet read. Logically, this second group got most questions wrong. In fact, the researchers explicitly stated that they tried crafting the questions so that they would get these questions wrong. 
After attempting to solve these questions, they moved on to read the study material. And as you can see here, the study clearly shows that adding that series of very challenging questions that force us to get stuff wrong before we even attempt to read the material has a beneficial effect. And so that is something to keep in mind here, because I'm sure a lot of people trying this out will be like, how the hell am I supposed to answer questions about something I haven't even read? Pfft, what a stupid method. And so, yeah, just keep that in mind, because that's not a bug. It's a feature. And there's actually quite a good amount of research behind this. In case you're curious, you just have to search the generation effect and you'll see what I mean. By the way, in case you're interested, I have a whole course where I go over these and many other science-based study techniques. You can watch it for free by following the instructions down in the description. Okay, so there are a couple of potential problems and limitations that you need to know if you plan on using the system. Number one, I don't know how the system will behave with every type of study material. So far, I have tested this with an article from the New England Journal of Medicine, an article from Nature, and a physiology chapter, and I was pretty satisfied with the results, but I can't promise that you will be satisfied with every type of study material that you put into the system. And number two, which I think is even more important, is that the quality of your study material will heavily depend on how good you are at instructing this bot. To ensure a basic standard of quality, I try to leave a very comprehensive set of instructions in the guideline, but the fact of the matter is that this bot is very unpredictable, right? Sometimes he will give you perfect responses, and sometimes he will give you mediocre and poorly worded questions. When this happens, your level of skill using chatbots will be what determines whether you end up with a great study tool or a mediocre one. So if you're interested in using this, I suggest you take a couple of hours to really learn how to use ChatGPT properly. And take this as a general advice for the future, right? Because artificial intelligence is here and people are already using it to get ahead. And so if you don't want to stay behind, the best thing you can do is to have a basic understanding of how these tools work and how to make the most out of them. Now, if you want my recommendation of where you can start learning about all of this, I would suggest you check out a lesson called Can Computers Learn? in the course an Introduction to Neural Networks. There, the sponsor of this video, which is brilliant, will take you through a series of challenges, analogies, and games that explain how neural networks work, why they make the mistakes they make, and why, despite the name, they don't have the ability to think. This lesson is very short, fairly easy to understand, and extremely, extremely engaging. I mean, the game they use to explain this is literally tic-tac-toe. And yes, in case you were wondering, they use this very same hands-on interactive learning approach in all of their lessons and all of their courses. So if you want to learn more about neural networks or anything related to STEM really, make sure to check out Brilliant. You can get a free 30-day trial by using my link at brilliant.org slash SantiagoAQ. And hurry, because the first 200 subscribers that sign up through that link will get a 20% of discount in the annual premium subscription. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.